So they have a really delicate balance to walk between keeping us relatively fearful, but not so fearful that we stop what we're doing and really examine how it is that they've been waging. There are a lot of people who lie and get away with it. And, uh, and that uh, we will in fact find uh, uh, weapons or, or evidence of weapons programs that are, are conclusive. I don't think we'll discover anything myself. It appears that there were not weapons of mass destruction there. You said you knew where they were. I did not. We know where they are. They're in the area around uh, Tikrit and Baghdad and, and uh, east, west, south and north. Well, first of all, I, I have it lied. There are a lot of people who lie and get away with it. Talking about lies and your, your right allegation on. that there was bulletproof evidence of ties between Al-Qaeda and Iraq. Was that a lie? Intelligence gathered by this and other governments leaves no doubt that the Iraqi regime continues to possess and conceal some of the most lethal weapons ever devised. Are people going to find out the truth? And the truth will say that this intelligence is good intelligence, no doubt in my mind. I don't know anybody that I can think of who has contended that the Iraqis had nuclear weapons. And we believe he has, in fact, reconstituted nuclear weapons. Saddam Hussein is determined to get his hands on a nuclear bomb. We cannot wait for the final proof. He's got him. He's got him. The smoking gun. He's got him. It could come in the form of a mushroom cloud. Colin Powell didn't lie. My colleagues, every statement I make today is backed up by sources, solid sources. These are not assertions. What we're giving you are facts and conclusions based on solid intelligence. He has not developed any significant capability with respect to weapons of mass destruction. He is unable to project conventional power against his neighbors. Are people going to find out the truth? I have not suggested there's a connection between Iraq and 9-11. You have said in the past that it was, quote, pretty well confirmed. No, I never said that. Okay. I, I never think said that, that is... No, absolutely not. What I said was, uh, it's been pretty well confirmed, that he did go to Prague and he did meet with um, a senior official of the Iraqi intelligence service. Saddam Hussein aids and protects terrorists, including members of al-Qaeda. Secretly and without fingerprints, he could provide one of his hidden weapons to terrorists or help them develop their own. What did Iraq have to do with what? The attack upon the World Trade Center. Nothing! He said there were three main reasons for going to war in Iraq. Weapons of mass destruction. Saddam Hussein has gone to elaborate lengths, spent enormous sums, taken great risks to build and keep weapons of mass destruction. The claim that Iraq was sponsoring terrorists would have attacked us on 9-11. Before September the 11th, many in the world believed that Saddam Hussein could be contained. And that Iraq had purchased nuclear materials from Niger. The regime is seeking a nuclear bomb. Uh, all three of those turned out, turned out to be false. Uh, first, uh, just if I might correct a misperception, I, I don't think we ever said, at least I know I didn't say, that there was a direct connection between September the 11th and, 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 and Saddam Hussein. Who does the president think he's effing kidding? Um, of course, it was information that was mistaken. There are a lot of people who lie and get away with it. Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. <laughs> Nope, no weapons over there. <laughs> Maybe under here. When you have a precedent set like that, and you have somebody, George Tennant, acknowledging in his book that he knew that the administration was deceiving the American people into a situation that is murdering young men and women from this country and others. That George Tennant and Dick Cheney and Condoleezza Rice and George Bush et al. should be in fucking jail. I'm a man of hell, but I'm not going to break this anymore! Yourself, Mr. He's going to figure out what to do with uh, 
all of the uh, debris. How about you? You made money off the golf floor! And now you're going to vote for your fascist son! All lies! All lies! Still lies! Stop the lies! Stop the lies! It is important. It's to make this life free and beautiful, to make this life a wonderful... I'm Ray McGovern, a 27-year veteran of the Central Intelligence Agency and co-founder of Veteran Intelligence Professionals for Sanity. <laughs> I would like to uh, compliment you on your uh, observation that lies are fundamentally destructive of the trust that government needs to govern. A colleague of mine, Paul Pillar, who is the top agency analyst on the Middle East and on counterterrorism, accused you and your colleagues of an organized campaign of manipulation, quote, I suppose by some definitions Could you that, get to your question, that be please? called a lie. Atlanta, September 27, 2002, Donald Rumsfeld said, and I quote, uh, like there is bulletproof evidence of links between Al-Qaeda and the government of President Saddam Hussein. Was that a lie, Mr. Rumsfeld, or was that manufactured somewhere else? Because all of my CIA colleagues disputed that, and so did the 9-11 Commission. And so I would like to, to ask you to be upfront with the American yeah. people. Why did you lie to get us into a war that was not necessary and that has caused these kinds of casualties? Yeah. Why? Well, first of all, I, I haven't lied. I did not lie then. <laughs> Colin Powell didn't lie. He spent weeks and weeks with the Central Intelligence Agency people and prepared a presentation that I know he believed was accurate. And he presented that to the United Nations. The President spent weeks and weeks with the Central Intelligence people. And he went to the American people and made a presentation. I'm not in the intelligence business. They gave the world their honest opinion. It appears that there were not weapons of mass destruction there. You said you knew where they were. I did not. I said I knew where suspect sites were, and you we said, were just... You said you knew where they were, near Tikrit, uh, near Baghdad, and northeast, south, and west of there. Those are your words. My words... My words were that... No, 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 no. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let him stay one second. Just a second. Just a second, indeed. Rumsfeld's words about WMD, March 30th, 2003, on ABC's This Week with George Stephanopoulos, were, quote, We know where they are. They're in the area around Tikrit and Baghdad and east, west, south, and north somewhat. This is America, huh? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. You're getting plenty of play, sir. I just like an honest answer. I'm giving it to you. We're talking about lies and your, your right. allegation that there was bulletproof evidence of ties between Al-Qaeda and Iraq. Did Rumsfeld make that allegation? Indeed, he did. September 27, 2002, to the Chamber of Commerce, right there in Atlanta, quoting, We ended up with five or six sentences that were bulletproof. We could say them. They're factual. They're exactly accurate. They demonstrate that there are, in fact, Al-Qaeda in Iraq. But they're not photographs. They're not beyond a reasonable doubt. Still, Mr. Rumsfeld again had to face his own words quoted back to him. How to do that? Change the subject. Was that a lie? Or were you misled? 
Zarqawi was in Baghdad during the pre-war period. That is a fact. Zarqawi? He was in the north of Iraq in a place where Saddam Hussein had no rule. He That's was where also, he was. He was also in Baghdad. Yeah, when he needed to go to the hospital. Come on, these people aren't idiots. They yes. know the story. You are... Let, let, me, let me give you an example. It's easy for you to make a charge. Um, but why do you think that the men and women in uniform, every day when they came out of...